Hello, this episode of The Flying Reporter comes from the Poulis factory that makes aviation supplies used by pilots all around the world. I've been using Poulis since learning to fly almost 10 years ago. I still have the old knee board I started with back then. I've always been curious about the company, which has been in business for 65 years. It's currently in the safe hands of Sebastian Pooley. So Pooley's was started by your father, Robert. Yes, that's correct. So uh, the company dates back to 1957. Uh, we're celebrating our 65th anniversary this year. Um, he was, uh, he did national service with the RAF and uh, after that went to work for de Havilland. Uh, he was on part of the Comet flight test. Um, and he uh, actually fell in love with uh, John Cunningham's secretary uh, who was flying. And uh, so he decided that, you know, to, to win her, 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 her admiration, he would start flying too. John Cunningham? John Cunningham, the test pilot okay. for, uh, for de Havilland. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, he started, he started flying and he realised that people were buying all their equipment in, or most of their equipment in, for the US or from uh, Germany. Mm. And there was a space in the marketplace for a, for a UK company. And that's how he started. It wasn't called Poolies in those days. Um, you weren't allowed, apparently, by Companies House to, to use your own name. <laughs> so, uh, so it started off actually as a light aircraft publishing company. Mm. Uh, then uh, we switched to Air Tour International for many years. Um, and uh, my brother Julian, who was involved with the company for, uh, for a number of years, uh, he did some research while he was at business school and realised that actually the Poolies name was, was very, very strong as a brand. And that's why we switched to uh, Poolies Flight Equipment. So what was the company back then? What was it doing? Gosh, uh, so in, 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 in the first instance, he was making knee boards and flight boards, uh, mm. something that 65 years later, you can see we are still doing here mm. at our factory at Cranfield. Um, he uh, actually did a little bit of tinkering in the workshops at de Havilland uh, while he had a bit of spare time on his hands. Um, and then he took the old box Dalton uh, computers, the, uh, the whiz wheels, mm. and he'd reconditioned those for people. Uh, and then uh, either reconditioned them for a fee or he'd take them and, and, and do them up and sell them on. And again, the whiz wheel is something that we're still making in our factory here today. Um, he then got into charts and he was buying and selling charts. Um, and uh, it evolved from there. Got into publishing uh, in the early 60s um, and uh, was involved with a company called Airlife, Airlife Publishing. Uh, they used to be the, the, the original publisher of the Trevor Tom manuals, uh, which are now called the Air Pilots manuals. Um, those books themselves are still you know, known for being sort of the, the go-to text uh, for PPL training uh, in the UK and around the world. Um, and uh, yeah, I think we've, those books have been used by what, a quarter of a million people. Uh, to learn to fly over the years, so, uh, so it's quite, a, um, quite an achievement. So when did you, I mean you were born 19, you're going to put an age on you now. <laughs> no, no, it's You're younger than me. Oh yeah, right at the end of the 70s. So yes. you were born into the company? Well effectively, yes, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, yes, I was born with aviation all around me mm. uh, and we were very lucky where we lived. Um, there was always aviation going on. Uh, people were always visiting. They'd, uh, uh, we had, uh, you know, a, a decent-sized garden, so we'd often get a helicopter come in. Uh, the um, uh, the army would come in. The army air corps would come in. The RAF would fly in their in their helicopters. Um, I'd often be taken to air shows, of course, as you would do in mm. you know in the aviation industry. Um, and uh, and I spent you know many happy hours down at Elstree in the old days, you know, um, exploring the hangar and just I mean you know I I, I was let free to do. What so you took over the company, now when was this, 2007? It was, no, so it would have been uh, about 2002 I got involved. So right. I came straight out of university, um, yeah. uh, you know, that summer, I got involved doing some shows. Uh, the uh, PFA, as it was in those days, mm. PFA rally was held at, uh, uh, what well, used to be at Cranfield, so I used to get involved in that. Then I think it was at Rawton and Kemble. Um, and so that summer I got involved with the show, mm. got involved with the company, and I never left. So right. I got involved with that. Um, Robert then, my father Robert, then got involved in a completely different industry. Swords. So, swords. Ceremonial, Ceremonial swords. swords. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you think aviation is a niche market, <laughs> swords is an even niche market. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, and actually I, I think for him worked out quite well. He got to go and do uh, something different, something that he uh, had always had a passion for. 
Um, and uh, you may have seen them around the industry. There are various PUD saws that uh, have been donated, or air tour saws, because it goes back that long, uh, that have been donated to various aviation organizations as prizes. Uh, as, a, for instance, AOPA gives a saw away to the best general aviation uh, airfield each year. Um, the Honorable Company of Air Pilots has a sword of honor that they give away each year, which, incidentally, um, you know, 50 years after Robert gave it to the Air Pilots, uh, it was awarded to him this year for his lifetime contribution to general aviation, which is rather nice. Now, we're going to be launching a competition a bit later in this video, so stay tuned for that. Your chance to win a personalized logbook and the Poolis Flight Guide, which yes. many of us, of course, rely on. Came um, out this week, yeah. The, the, latest, the, the latest one, exactly. Um, so stay tuned for that. That will be coming up uh, a bit later on in this video. But um, I thought you could perhaps talk us around, show us around the factory here, sure. what goes on, how you make the products that you do. So yeah. give us a, a sort of walk around. So, uh, so yes, van backs up into the, in, into the uh, car park, uh, offloads a pallet of rolls of material. So these are the materials that then go to make the, uh, the sheets of the kneeboard. Uh, another lorry will come in and deliver the back of the board that goes in the middle, middle to give it the rigidity. Um, those rolls of material will be taken to a slitting machine uh, and where they'll be taken from one long roll and maybe made up into five individual small bales. Um, those bales will then be uh, taken to a guillotine. They'll be fed through a guillotine and chopped into the panel sizes. So depending on which size of kneeboard we have, whether it's a, an A4 flight board or an A5 kneeboard, uh, you'll get all the different panel sizes. They'll then be taken to a screen machine. The panels are plastic uh, and some of the kneeboards have a rigid board on the back and then taken to a, a, a high frequency welding machine, which uses essentially electricity to melt the plastic and any other uh, items that we add into it, whether it's a plastic sheet to go on the top or an insert on the inside where you can tuck, tuck in your ruler or your plotter or your protractor. Uh, and that'll go into the hot, full, uh, hot uh, frequency welder, high frequency welder, and uh, it'll be put together. From there, uh, it'll go to a kick press, and the kick pre press will put a hole in uh, for your stopwatch clip or for the clip uh, that you tuck your, uh, your plug in underneath. Um, and then the final bit is to put in the elastic strap that then holds it on in place. If it's an e-board, obviously it's a flight board, it just sits on your lap. So that is the process of, in, in, you know, in about two minutes of how to put together an e-board. And these products are sold all around the world? Yes, absolutely. So, uh, so we're very lucky uh, in the UK because British aviation has been exported uh, around the world, uh, certainly to Commonwealth countries. Uh, so yes, we sell. We don't do anything in North America. We do very little in North America because it's uh, FAA land, if you like. Um, but uh, UK, ER, so we do into Africa as far as South Africa. We've just opened a pilot shop uh, in Kenya at Wilson Airport. Uh, we've got customers in the Middle East, uh, including uh, a new customer in Oman, first aviation academy uh, in Oman, uh, Emirates, uh, Etihad, uh, and then out to the Far East. So, as I say, uh, uh, Commonwealth, uh, Singapore, Malaysia, uh, we go out to Hong Kong, Australia, and New Zealand. So it's, yeah, it's quite a, uh, uh, quite a spread. So since taking over the company, and, and uh, you... you it's been it's been a successful few year, a few years, hasn't it? I mean, since when did you say you took over? Two thousand. So two thousand two. Two thousand two, yeah. and in that period, you've, you've you've grown remarkably. So the company now is about three times the size it was mm. uh, in two thousand and two, mm. which is which is fantastic. Um, what do you put and, that down um, to? I mean, you of course, but well, uh, that's, what else? Sorry, no, it's not just me. No, it is. It's the team, yeah. and, um, and and we're very very lucky because we have a phenomenal team, uh, many of whom have been with us for many many years. Um, we have a very very low staff turnover. Um, it, it's a family business, but it's also family within a family. So uh, Sheila, who I mentioned earlier, who's been with us for 50 years, her daughter Louise also works for us. Uh, her niece Emma also works for us. Um, and her best friend Pat also works for us. So, uh, so there's, 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 there's a lot of um, uh, family and friends within the business. We've, we've seen sort of a gradual decline in private flying. Yeah. Um, I presume commercial pilot training has been fairly constant, maybe growing, I don't know. Um, how do you grow a company in that in those circumstances in this, this business? So, uh, so two elements exactly what you said. So the general aviation, yes, it, it has been in decline, but I think we've been growing our marketing share. So we've been developing the product range that we do. We now do over two thousand eight hundred different product SKUs. So, uh, so we always say 
if you're learning to fly, we can provide you with everything apart from the aircraft, the instructor, <laughs> and the money. Uh, but pretty much, we can do yeah. we can do everything else. Um, uh, so, uh, so yes, evolution of the product range has been key to that. Um, in the commercial world, yes, you know, I'm sure you know there is a pilot shortage worldwide, um, not helped at all by COVID. Um, you know, with the airlines. Uh, uh, making redundant, culling uh, huge numbers of senior uh, senior captains. So where we had a pilot shortage before, that's really been uh, exacerbated by uh, by the problems of COVID. Um, and so yes, we the, the uh, commercial schools uh, certainly the ones that we we deal with are as busy as they've ever been, which is great to see. I was going to ask you about the last three years because you have held your own in terms of mm. turnover. I think um, in those very rocky waters. Yeah. Um, and I wonder how you reflect, you know, in the company that's, as you say, 65 years old, mm -hmm. how you reflect on those last three years and how they compare to all the other turbulent times that the country has been through and your, your sure. dad has been through running the company. Because, of course, we've been through that horrible mm -hmm. COVID, a massive bounce back in yeah. pilot training and yeah, now so. a recession and a cost of living crisis. And I can see it at airfields, the, yeah. the decline again. Um, so. How, how do you characterise those last three years and maybe look ahead to what you see as the risks and opportunities of the, the sort of coming five years? So for us, I go back to, uh, to Brexit actually mm. and, and you know, we weren't sure what was going to happen. We weren't sure what the trade deal was going to be uh, with the EU. So um, to mitigate against that, we decided we set up a company in Ireland. So we now have Pooley Flood Equipment EU Limited uh, mm. and that's serving all our trade customers uh, in the EU. And actually that's been brilliant. Uh, and that means that whenever they receive their orders, there's no customs, there's no duty, there's no VAT for them to worry about. So are you manufacturing in mm. Ireland then as well? We're not manufacturing. Mm. Uh, everything in terms of manufacturing is still based in the UK. Yeah. Uh, but, but it just eases the process, but it does eases it? the process right. enormously. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so we've had a lot of success on that front, mm. um, and uh, and that's been really welcomed uh, by our customers in the EU. And so, I think that has helped to stabilise the market for us over there, mm. which has been brilliant. Um, and then in terms of COVID, yes, I mean, wow, that was mm. uh, that was a really interesting time. Mm. So, I mean, you remember, John? I mean, we all went home on March the twenty fourth, twenty twenty. Uh, April, uh, you know, was a really, really, really tough month. Uh, May, uh, it improved a little bit uh, as restrictions were eased. You can, you know, you could do maintenance flights. Uh, the commercial schools could still continue to operate. Um, and then uh, July the 4th, uh, obviously our ind Independence Day from, uh, from COVID, if you like, mm. it went absolutely mad. Mm. Um, and one of the things I particularly remember is around headsets. Mm. So, you know, you'd go to your local flying school, you'd borrow a headset off mm. the wall and you'd go flying mm. with it. You know, no problem at all. Suddenly, no, you know, that's mm. not going to happen. Um, and we were scrambling all across the world to try and find headsets to supply the demand that mm. was, uh, was then available. So that then came about. So, um, yeah, real, real mixed bag. So what gets you up in the morning, you know? Um, what motivates okay. you to, to get up and do what you do here? So actually, this goes back to something that my father said. You know, we're very lucky. And I can you in the same uh, in the same, John. Uh, we have a passion for flying. We're involved in the aviation industry, and we don't go to work on a Monday morning. We go to do our passion on a Monday morning. And I always thought that was a, a really good way of putting it. Um, and I still think that counts. Um, you know, uh, for me, it's evolving the business. We talked about you know what's coming next. We've got a huge number of products in the pipeline, um, uh, and uh, you know, we, for us, people can learn to fly, they can get their license and they'll have some flying knowledge. But ultimately, we want them to have flying wisdom. Sounds slightly corny. But you know, we want them to go beyond just the basics uh, of, uh, of their flight training. A, bit, a little bit like um, professional development, continuous professional development. You know, we want to see that in aviation. And I think that's where we see ourselves in the marketplace. I hope others do too, as helping people to get the most out of their flying, but be the best pilots that they possibly can be. So to our competition. Yes. And um, you've launched a new uh, product that's just hot off the press, literally, isn't it? Yes, the, absolutely. The, the engraving of uh, logbooks. Yes. So personalized logbooks. Um, so talk to me about that. Show me that process happening. 
Okay. Because um, I think you're going to you're going to print one for me or, or, or laser one for me. Absolutely. That's the best way of describing so, it. So so the laser the laser uh, printer, if you like, is the is the latest bit of kit that we've uh, we brought into the factory, uh, and uh, it started off because we wanted to engrave uh, the headset cups with uh, you know flying schools logos. Um, so we've been doing that for a, for a few months. Um, and then we thought, well, you know, people often want personalised uh, logbooks or you know personalised products, uh, and so yes, we we've, we've got some plates. Uh, we're going to get one done for you, John Hunt, flying reporter, mm -hmm. um, and we're going to pop that onto a logbook of your choice. And then we thought we could do it also for your aircraft. So we'll do a tech and journey logbook uh, with uh, with your uh, with, with your registration oh. engraved on that. India, Victor, will be very pleased. <laughs> very pleased. And you can have one of these personalised logbooks as well because um, Poolies are offering to, to do one for you. It can yes. I, you can either have a, a new logbook of your choice with this uh, engraved uh, uh, badge on it um, or you can just have the badge to put on your own logbook, yeah. I think, if you, if you like. And also I think we're giving away, or you're giving away, um, the flight guide as well, yes. which has come out, Absolutely. which of course is an essential uh, item for your flight bag. Um, so to the competition, okay. and the competition is simply name this airfield. Yes. Ah, oh, good classic. Uh, <laughs> name this airfield competition. Um, so here is the graphical display with a few edits taken out to remove any clues. Yep. <laughs> yep. Don't of, make it too easy. <laughs> of an airfield in the UK. In the UK. Um, and it's this is the graphical image from the latest flight guide. Have a look at that and see if you can name that airfield. To enter the competition, go to the Poolies website. There is a one in three chance of getting this right because it's a multiple choice question. Um, the closing date for the competition is midnight on Wednesday the 21st of December and the winner will be announced here on the YouTube channel on Thursday the 22nd of December. Sebastian, thank you. John. It's been great to meet you. Thank and you it's been amazing <laughs> coming to see all the people and see all the work that goes in, into all of these products which fill my flight bag. <laughs> Um, and so uh, thank you for all the work you do for, for pilots in the UK and around the world. Fantastic, John. Thanks. It's great to have you. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for watching The Flying Reporter. To be notified about my next episode, please subscribe to my channel. And if you're thinking of buying something from Poolies, Flying Reporter viewers can get 5% off most purchases using the discount code TFR.